Hello everyone, this is the Tank Index here, and today I think we'll be talking about the first Soviet Tank Index title. We talked about some Russian designs, but if I remember correctly, this will be the first Soviet one. Um, today we'll be talking about the T-18 slash MS-1 tank, which I mean, it's basically a Russian Renault a decade too late. So to provide some backstory, in May of 1924, only two years after the USSR was originally founded, a tank bureau would be formed. The specification for the first tank they wanted was a 3-ton, 2-man light tank capable of 7.5 miles per hour, which, I mean, even for 1924, was pitifully slow. Um, it would be given 16 millimeters of armor and a 37 millimeter gun, um, just like the one found on the Pateau SA-18 on the FT. Though, by 1925, the weight allowance was, thankfully, up to 5 tons. Um, in terms of history, so, Professor V. Zaz Zaz okay, oh God. And Zaslavsky designed a tank with only a 35 horsepower engine being provided by the Moscow AMO factory, which would be a comment of a, a copy of a previous Fiat truck engine. The gun was a copy of a Pateau SA-18 found in the FT, though to be fair it wasn't all a copy, um, as you can see on the left it does look like a copy, but I mean it did have a wider turret and as well as a spring suspension which was a lot better than the FT's. In June of 1927, a prototype called a T-16 was tested. However, it would be deemed a failure with its transmission failing too often and being unable to cross a 1.5 meter trench, which was pretty low for trenches after World War I. Um, an improved version would be drawn up in July as the T-18 or MS-1, which would be, you know, which is basically the support vehicle small Type 1. Um, its chassis and suspension were carried over and sort of improved from the T-16 with an independent vertical spring suspension. And the same 300mm track, though we did have an improved engine entered by the by Alexander Mikulin, who is really well known for making some amazing jet and aircraft engines, though he also worked on the Tsar tank, which was a less amazing invention. Um, it still only had a 35 horsepower engine though, um, though we did have some electrical pieces like a, like a rear light, which wasn't guaranteed on tanks at the time. It had six 8mm curved plates on the turret and 16mm plates for the hull, with an emergency exit on the underside of the tank, which is a pretty weird tank. A pr I mean, a pretty weird place to put it. Um, in terms of statistics, it had the same gun from the FT, despite it being almost completely obsolete by now and having a bad sight to boot. I mean, I mean, against other tanks, it really wouldn't have much of a shot. It was capable of 10 to 12 rounds a minute though, which against infantry and lighter vehicles wouldn't be a powerful weapon. Um, a double barreled 6.5mm machine gun was in a ball mount near the front as well. The tank carried a good 104 shells and tw nearly like 2,000 bullets, which was pretty amazing, though later models would also have the machine gun replaced with DT. The tank could go 10 miles an hour, which to be fair was more than the expectation put forward by the committee, which was pretty low, but I mean, at, at the very least, it was better than the FT. I don't know why I cut out there. Um, in mid-May of 1927, texts took place. Representatives from the Red Army, some factories, and economic bureaus were all present. In terms of overcoming obstacles, it wasn't very much better than the FT, often just getting stuck in trenches deeper than 1.2 meters, or wider than 2 meters. Um, it was faster and more nimble though, to be fair, with more ammunition and better armor, as well as a better speed. Which, I mean, that just sold the Soviet Army on the tank, who I guess didn't have very high standards, considering the other tanks that at their disposal were... Maybe, maybe a captured Whippet and some Mark IVs, as well as some FTs, so really not much. Um, 108 would be ordered in February of 1928, and what would later be renamed the Bolshevik Factory. The first batch of 30, however, were shown to have some serious technical problems. So with the inclusion of another factory, these two factories were able to deliver 96 of the tanks by 1929. Another trial in Moscow was made to address the tank's problems in trench crossing, where a tail, sort of, was added to the front, though this was quickly removed because the driver couldn't, literally couldn't see anything. Um, an improved version with a better 40 horsepower engine and suspension would be introduced though, with a total of 960 tanks overall being built from 1929 to 1971. This, thing, this tank is really forgotten despite it being the root of the Soviet tank program as well as having nearly a thousand made. Um, there were plans to give it a newer 37mm gun, likely something like the Bofors, but that was never implemented. Later tests would lead to the T-19, T-20, and eventually the T-24. Um, in terms of combat history, an experimental company would be given these tanks to fight against a Chinese warlord in Manchuria while defending the Far Eastern Railway in 1929. Um, after that, though, they would be put in only training roles in 1932, but when the Germans invaded, many were given... I mean, they kind of just look at these tanks and they're like, 
Well, I mean, at least there's some tanks. Let's give them to the troops. They slapped some 45 mm guns on them, and they entered service as the T-18M. These were very obsolete by then, and would just be thrown at the enemy and then destroyed by an anti-tank gun. Um, I, I couldn't actually find any image of the thing, so on the left you can see a brilliantly photoshopped version. In November of 1929, an SPG based off the T-18, as well as an ammunition carrier for the, FTG were, for the SPG were designed. A prototype being a captured FT-17 BS, the SPG version of the FT, which was likely captured for the Polish-Soviet War of 1920. It replaced the turret with something that resembled almost like a pyramid, having a 76mm gun, though without the ammunition carrier, it would only be able to carry 4-6 to six shells and have no secondary weapons. Um, other prototypes would armor it with a high-power 37mm gun or a 45mm gun, um, and it only has 5-7mm to seven millimeter thick plates for the armor, which is pitiful. Um, the ammunition carrier, though, could carry 500 rounds of the 76mm gun and around 2,700 rounds for the other two guns, which is insanely impressive. This one would at least have a machine gun to defend it with a driver and a gunner. Um, on June 11th, the decision was made to build it with a prototype arriving on October 10th, 1930. Um, though, I mean, the design would be cancelled with any work on the SU-18 just being stopped. Um, for final assessments... The, the T-18 really wasn't a good tank. It was basically a Russian Renault, except built a full decade later, making it essentially obsolete upon entry. Its gun by that point was pretty obsolete with very little armor piercing capability and low speeds especially. Um, if it fought, I mean, to be fair, like, I mean, the other world powers were really just using World War One era tanks, so if it fought against any of those, it would probably win. But I mean, if it fought against British tanks, it would just be crushed immediately, and it was only salvaged due to the majority of world powers apart from Britain, really just using either experimental prototype designs and one-offs or some World War One relics. By the 1930s, this thing was just not it, though. Um, on the bright side, though, it did give the USSR experience in both tanks in general and SPGs, which both of those would be used in great effort in World War Two and the afterward years. So I hope you enjoyed the, the video and I will see you all next time.